Um, I would just like to call the uh, Town of South Rose Economic Development Committee meeting for Friday, May 27th at, let's see what time it is, 8.17 uh, to order. Um, just going to do a roll call vote of the people who are here. Um, right now, we may have others joining us as uh, things go along, but uh, I'm going to call people as I see them on the screen. Uh, Chris? Here. Alan? Here. Matt? Here. Uh, and Rob Anderson, chair, um, here. So we do have a uh, quorum. Um, I know we do have a lot to uh, discuss today uh, at the meeting. I think uh, one of the things, uh, first off uh, on reports, um, I would like to, uh, as chair, and I think um, hopefully I'd hear some other feedback from um, the members. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Marika for her uh, tireless work on behalf of the Economic Development Committee and for the town of Southboro for her work as our Economic Development Coordinator. Um, I do believe, I think, that this will be uh, Marika's uh, last meeting with us. Um, she has uh, left us with uh, many grants that will uh, have her uh, fingerprints on them that we will uh, we have applied for and potentially those that we will be applying for in the future. Uh, I, I think um, it's going to be a loss to the town of Southboro not to have uh, Marika working on our behalf. So I think off the bat, as the first report, um, I would like to just uh, thank Marika for her work um, and perhaps open that up to uh, the other uh, attendees as well uh, from uh, the committee. Um, Alan, I saw your hand go up. Yeah, Marika, you will be missed. It's been great working with you. Thank you for all of your efforts. The line I used at the um, volunteer breakfast, and I'll continue to use it, is that we are not looking to replace Marika. We're looking to fill the vacancy she's leaving. And I think it's an important distinction. So thank you for everything you've done. Yeah, I, this is Chris. I want to just say, Marika, you said a standard will be hard for others to follow. Uh, your ability to work in a complex world of government employees and uh, outside businesses and to bring resources together and people together to accomplish goals um, we couldn't imagine achieving uh, without you. And your sidekick, Claire Reynolds. <laughs> Quite a team. And I think we set a precedent in getting those um, grants. I don't think there's anybody else who's gotten in terms of dollar figures, but also for the right kinds of things that we were able to gain. So we wish you great success and always know that, well, when you go to this faraway country, uh, you've got lots of references and uh, I hope you have a spare bedroom. We're all gonna come visit. Yeah. But best of luck to you and you will be greatly missed. Yeah, here, uh, all I can do is uh, second or third or fourth uh, those sentiments. Uh, I'm right. We've known each other for, for a number of years for my involvement here. And, uh, um, but I've been impressed by everything you've accomplished. And I think your, your, your work is very, very underrated. In this um, I was late to the party, but I am above and beyond the call of duty so many times. You always have, you're always ahead of the curve. You're always on the ball. And um, I don't know what we're going to do without you, but I'm, I'm really excited for you and your next adventures. I just want to thank you all for your kind words. Um, uh, it's been an um, amazing three years um, uh, to um, an opportunity to work for the town I live in. Uh, so I really enjoyed it. There were ups and downs, but I really appreciate the committee's support always and their enthusiasm in in you know supporting every, anything I would uh, come up with or would be doing. So I really um, I'm going to miss you all, and um, hopefully we can stay in touch somehow. And I'll be back to visit and uh, you know I don't want to say goodbye, but uh, 
till we meet again. So it's been uh, it's been a great experience for me. So thank you all. Thanks, Marika. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm I'm not sure how we will um, handle things going forward, but um, uh, it's if if you still are in touch with us, um, uh, the ability to uh, bounce things off you from a uh, philosophical standpoint, given your uh, uh, knowledge of the community and some of those things that you've done, would be um, would be greatly appreciated. Um, so I think as a, uh, a report from the chair, I think that is the uh, uh, thanking you for uh, your commitment to the EDC and the commitment to the town is um, the, the only thing that I have on, on my agenda. So I, I'm gonna open that up to uh, uh, reports from uh, members. Um, I have unfortunately been on uh, vacation the past couple of weeks. So I did not have the opportunity to go to the uh, volunteer breakfast. Um, I, I know, Alan, you had brought up the fact that you were there. Perhaps you could give us a, a brief overview of that. Uh, sure. Um, it was good, more just mingling. Um, we thank um, Sam, who's in attendance as one a member of the select board and the entire select board for offering up the opportunity um, for, for us to meet and mingle and um, and the select board recognizing all the boards and committees in town for, for their work. So it's appreciated. There was a, there was a little uh, moment of, um, of thanks and recognition to uh, Don Morris for his multiple years of service on the planning board. So that was nice. Um, turning to EDC for a moment, I did have a chance to chat with Mark Purple. Um, and we can discuss that a little bit later on when we talk about, I think it's item 3B on our agenda, which is the job description, because I was able to chat with him live there. So I'll save the rest for what I chatted with Mark and share it publicly here uh, when we get to that part on the agenda. Uh, wonderful, thank you. Um, are there any other um, reports from members? Um, uh, Julie, is there any new update on the um, master plan committee? Uh, no, I, I I can check uh, get right back to you when comments are due, but I know it is available for public comment right now. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Um, Matt, Chris, anything to add? The only thing I would add is I was at the uh, food truck rally uh, at St. Mark's, which was a great success, but I ended up uh, chatting with the fire department. His name is Chris. Um, I think the last name is A-N-O-N. -N. I don't know if anybody knows him, but we started chatting and we discussed how the fire department visits a lot of the businesses on a regular basis to check for fire uh, prevention uh, concerns and requirements and also how that information they have when they meet with these uh, landlords would be helpful for the Economic Development Committee along. The, the police department also breaks up the town in sections and different officers go out and meet the various businesses to talk about security. But they, and also I was gonna to talk to Paul Sibeli. These three people are in contact with different businesses all year round and getting information uh, that they would see economic development as an opportunity for the town to grow and prosper. Getting information from them uh, could be very helpful. And this gentleman from the fire department indicated he was gonna to talk to the acting police chief and get together with us to see what kind of information we can gather um, when they're on their visits along with uh, Paul Sibeli. So I, I'll, I'll continue to pursue that, but I just want to say that the meeting that we held with Reliant, the thing that was impressive about it is this is the first time a whole cross section of the leadership of the town met with a current business. And um, it was an impressive uh, showing on the town's part, demonstrating across all departments, most of them were key ones, that uh, our relationship with the business community is crucial for the town to grow and prosper. 
and uh, there was excitement and a positive uh, experience. Uh, that's all I have. Okay. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Chris. And yeah, if you can keep on top of uh, those other town departments um, and what information they can share, um, uh, I, I perhaps um, they, they may be talking with uh, facility uh, people um, who can then help make those introductions to the, uh, the presidents and the owners of those businesses and uh, uh, get us through uh, more doors to have conversations. So if you wouldn't mind keeping on top of that, I'd greatly appreciate that. So um, I did want uh, to follow up and say, Marika was planning to get Dave Ferris in and uh, that's an important next step. So Dave Ferris, who has Ferris development and has several built, we already met with him once, but through a meeting like the one we just held would Reliant would be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Um, Matt, anything? No, no, I'm good. Okay, uh, excellent. Um, so uh, next up on the agenda, reports from the project manager, um, uh, Claire on the EEA grant. I'm here. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, so as of right now, uh, Paul uh, Pazinski still does not have a contract. Um, Paul has worked diligently with his insurance company. They do not quite understand what it is that uh, he's looking for. I sent another uh, email to Mark Purple yesterday and copied the select board on it and said, Let's have a meeting. It's my understanding, Rob. Uh, you never heard back from your phone. Uh, I uh, yeah. Um, the the update on that. I, I called uh, Mark before I went on vacation. I have not heard anything back from him. Okay, so I I figured that was the case, and um, uh, so that's where it's at. I said, you know, if you're really interested in going forward with this. Let's sit down and have a meeting. The problem is, is that Paul's insurance company does not understand what the town is looking for because he is not a licensed professional. So the issue of this professional liability insurance um, is, uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, they don't understand why. So anyway, he do Paul does finally have a quote. It's thirteen hundred bucks, and um, for a four thousand dollar contract, that certainly is not worthwhile. Therefore, um, the way Paul and I discussed it, this project is front end loaded in terms of the services that Paul would provide. So it needs to be rewritten, and it needs to include everything that would be doing, not just the pre. Um, uh, looking at all the puzzles, it would have to include the RFP and it also um, interviewing the engineering firms, uh, making a recommendation on a selection, and then initially working with the engineering firm. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we would uh, want to... Um, one, get started as soon as possible, and, and two, since there is a um, match from the town and match from the EDC, um, perhaps there is a way to uh, Yeah, uh, Rob, can I numbers. just update on that on an email that was sent from Kurt Gartner at uh, EEA yesterday? Uh, they have decided, the EEA has decided to upfront the money to the towns. Um, which, which would be the $45,000. So in other words, the town would, Mark Purple or whoever, uh, would submit an invoice to the EEA for the $45,000. My only question on that is, um, do the timeframes that were originally set really still hold fast? Or is there some give and take on that? Because if that's the case, that's a very good thing for us, considering that this thing has taken Sedona. 
well, if you if you do hear from uh, Mark Purple, I, I think that would be um, a, a good thing to ask. Um, I also believe that if they are going to be uh, upfronting us the money, um, one that is a very good thing for us, and two, I I, I would have to believe I agree with you that um, those particular deadlines of getting uh, things done before the end of the grant do go out the window. At the end of the day, we have to produce a report. And that report has to be done by June 30th of 2023, um, I believe. So as long as we're working towards that ultimate deadline with our ability to provide a report and answer all of the questions of the grant, um, I think that puts us in good stead. I, I do think we should not view that uh, new deadline as a, an opportunity for us to drag our feet anymore. And that we do need to get uh, Paul on board and we do need to get him uh, working on the identification of that engineering firm who can provide that for us. So um, I, I think hopefully if Mark is able to respond to your email, Claire, that he will also uh, kind of agree with your assessment and my assessment as well. Uh, just one, one other thing. Quarterly reports are still required. So that's a good thing. Therefore, we have to stick to the, um, we have to stick to our original plan. My only question to Kurt Gartner would be the $12,000 of the 45,000, which was originally stated in the contract that had to be spent by the end of June. Um, can that slip and say spend, you know, maybe $8,000 of it in June of this year and the other 4,000 in July? See, because what he, what he had done in the contract was it was broken down oh, because the fiscal year spanned two um, parts. And it's a little difficult to understand looking at the grant right in front of you, but it, it's pretty, it's very clear. Um, they wanted for the... Um, FY22, 12,000 spent, and then FY23, the balance of the 33,000. Okay. No, I, it's, it, uh, it, well, hopefully Kirk gets uh, back to you with an answer there. So, okay. So we're just waiting on Mark Purple to yes. respond. Okay. And maybe Alan can give some update on that. On an update. I don't know about Mark Purple in this issue in particular. Oh, I thought you talked to him about, I'm sorry. I thought you said that you talked to him at the volunteer breakfast. I did, but not, not about this particular issue. No, um, but it's still, the insurance is the thing that's kicking around. Right. And I'll, I'll, I'll say again, and I'll just reiterate from the last time we spoke, um, I, I, we need to stop using email. We need to actually just physically have a meeting and also, Claire, I, I've noted, um, I'm not sure if, you, if you've noticed because I did use email. When you send email from one particular account, it gets flagged as spam in my inbox. So I'm not sure if your messages are even getting received oh. by the planning board and by, by Mark. So you just might want to consider that. I don't, I don't know if that's the case. No, uh, but thank you. Um, hey, uh, Chris, um, could you put your... Uh, Oh, go on mute for a second. Marika can do it for him. Okay, uh, excellent. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, so uh, we had Claire's overview of uh, the EA, EEA grant. Um, Marika, uh, if you could give a, uh, a, a, up on the agenda next is a uh, coordinator's report. Your, your last here My with last? us. Um, Oh, don't say that. I'll start. <laughs> um, so coordinators report the grant application for the one stop is almost done. Um, I plan to submit it. Um, actually, I plan to submit it on Monday, but I guess it's a it's a holiday on Monday. So we'll do it on Tuesday before the June 2nd deadline. But uh, Katie Berry has been, uh, I guess, assisting um Vanessa to upload it on the portal itself. So that's complete. Uh, we received the letter from Mark Purple to support the application um, day before yesterday. 
Um, I actually am expecting a consultant's uh, price proposal from MAPC, which I can include, which will kind of um, support the, the money that we're asking for. Um, so that's all on track. Um, I don't know if there are any questions about the one stop. Um, in the end, I did not get any feedback from any other uh, committees or boards. Um, I had requested uh, they look at it. And I know it's kind of, it's a similar, but slightly changed application from last year. So I wasn't expecting a lot of, um, you know, a lot of, um, you know, questions. However, um, Dorian from Shopsy did reply, she would put it on the agenda, but I, I didn't see it on anyone's agenda for discussion actually. So that was a bit disappointing because I do feel it's super important that um, again, this is a town-wide project, even though the EDC is um, taking, you know, the initiative to submit an application, um, you know, it's a zoning review of Route 9 and looking at, um, you know, economic opportunities to kind of inform those zoning changes. So I think it, it, it's crucial that Chopsy and Planning Board are, are on board with this. Um, Alan? Um, just to, to know, I did attend the Planning Board, uh, virtually attend the Planning Board meeting this week. Um, it, was, it was verbally mentioned that they were okay. aware. I don't know if they circulated it and had an offline, I shouldn't say offline, that's not, um, I'm not suggesting they violated open meeting. I don't know if they had a chat. Um, elsewhere about it, but it was indeed mentioned that they are in receipt of it. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone knows that. Okay, good. Appreciate that. Um, so any other questions about the one-stop application? Uh, no, and um, I I'm going to use this as, a, as an opportunity because you brought up this particular one-stop grant application that one of the initiatives that I foresee for the EDC going forward with um, our new coordinator and our new mission is to keep on identifying potential grant requests, whether or not they be through um, the one stop or others out there. Because um, I do think that there is definitely a role for the town to pursue other opportunities for state funding to um, one, improve the quality of life for the town and, and help defray some of the the, the costs for the residents to take those next steps. So from an initiative standpoint, uh, grants will be kind of on our, um, uh, on our radar screen going forward. So um, Marika, thank you for doing all that work for the, the one stop. And I, I think that's something that we're going to pursue more going forward. And I will um, touch upon that again um, under uh, unfinished business too. Um, so yeah, uh, since I had grant applications, um, you know, general uh, as as coordinator report, I just wanted to mention something. I sent out an email last night uh, about another grant opportunity, which is more about um, it's called the bottleneck reduction program, which is uh, looking at traffic um, bottlenecks. Uh, so I was thinking maybe the EDC can um, think about that and see if we can use that. Um, for any problems along Route 9, because I, I know we mentioned it, and I think John Wood had also uh, discussed it uh, in previous meetings that there are some, um, some you know, um, streamlining opportunities to make traffic more, um, you know, better, and to uh, kind of, um, even the some of the businesses had mentioned it, uh, if there are certain changes with right or left turns, uh, that that would, uh, um, be better for economic development. Um, anyway, so I, it's out there. Please have a look. Uh, deadline is June 30th. Um, um, and and uh, Marika, just yeah. one thing. Um, you uh, just brought up John's name. I believe he's now um, he's in the, the, uh, the attendee. Yeah, yes. Here. Yeah, and no, that um, I, I had seen that uh, uh, email and I'm glad you were able to identify it. Um, I suppose one of the questions that um, would come up is their definition of local roads and whether or not it was something like Route 30 through or downtown versus Route 9. Um, but it is something where talking with um, our public works department might be very useful because uh, one, uh, coordination with other boards, other committees and other um, town departments is, is valuable for us from an overall economic development strategy. Um, but 
um, it, it is, and I was very glad to, to see that. So. Um, All right, uh, I'll move on to the next item, uh, local business directory for 20, I guess 22, 23 fiscal year. Um, so Claire and I have been working on that. Uh, all the DBA certificates have been uh, included. We have the assessor's database. Uh, so it's just a matter of uh, merging those two and uh, going through that um, before we can send it to quick print. But hopefully um, we can get that done uh, before my last day. So um, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the update. I just wanted to, to comment on that. Um, I actually reached out to Marika about that when I was in the townhouse a little while ago for something. I saw the what is now the current copy. And I said, hey, it would be great if we could. And she's like, well, guess what? It's already underway. And I was like, oh, what, what fortuitous timing for me to suggest it um, or mention it. So thank you to both of you for doing that. I think it's, I think it's great. One comment I had, and Marika, I know you, you know this already. I just want to share it publicly, is I was flipping through it. And it was really interesting to see in a community as, as kind of small, at Southboro, all of the different sort of businesses that are here, and it's really great that we're, we have a directory that we're celebrating them. The two comments I had, and again, Rick, I know you already know this, I just want everyone else to, to hear is that I know we're using a database that we don't have control over. So for a future update, not this one, because it's too late, but for a future update, it would be good if we could work with the assessors um, or whoever maintains that database is to get a one-line description of what that business is. Because for example, there's a whole section under consulting and it lists the names, but you don't know what that consultant does. And so I know if I were a local business, oh, sorry, let me just finish it. I saw you kind of raise your mm -hmm. hand. Um, and it would be also would be great too, um, in addition to a, some sort of a description is if we could get um, an online version. I know you, Marika, you mentioned that we, we could do it, but it's not sort of, sort of out of our control just because in today's day and age, I know the first thing I do is I go to Google, I go to the internet, I search and something. And so to have that available online to search as well as a paper copy would be great, so. Uh, so, Alan, those are all great suggestions. I just wanted to give you a little uh, history. Sure, uh, sure. So when I first joined, um, I guess Claire was working on, on the, the current copy of the local business directory. Um, and she was looking at um, even online, we would have like an interactive online version where you could click the, nice. the business and it would automatically, you know, uh, get you to the website. Um, and... Um, the online, I think the, the online directory definitely needs improvement because right now it's not even, I mean, we have to update that separately from, you know, from our database. Right. Uh, so just to even have a PDF or something on there would be, uh, would be beneficial, but it's very hard, I guess, at this time to do anything, um, changes, make any changes to the website, apparently, because people are just, we don't have the manpower and, or you know, right. whatever the reasons are, but it's something that we definitely um, are aware of. Um, regarding your, um, the database, the information itself, um, we, Claire and I worked with the, um, um, sorry, now, uh, with the uh, town, what is it? Um, um, the assessor? Or is it the no, office? what is it? The, oh God. Clerk, John Clerk. Clerk. The town oh, clerk. clerk, that's right. The town clerk accepts, you know, she, they sign all the DBA certificates so people come in and register their businesses. So we actually added a second page or a back page where the businesses can kind of identify what kind of business they are. Mm -hmm. um, to be honest, the businesses a lot of times don't even, you know, fill that out. They don't see the need, even though it, it stated that, you know, this information will go into the local business directory. So please, you know. Um, so we are trying to make them uh, get that information uh, so we know what, where to put it. Um, but um, just to let you know that we are, you know, okay. thinking of those things. But they're all valid points. Thank you. Appreciate those Mr. efforts. Thank you. Mr. Chair, may I just make a quick update? Y yes, yes, yes. Okay. So just so that people um, understand, um, the uh, downloads that we get are, are in Excel form. Well, I... Um, have them downloaded um, as a CSV file. Um, and then I can use that in access and that gives you all of the database capabilities that you need. Um, the Marika mentioned about the online capability. This is all driven by whoever has access to the website. And at some point in time, um, the town tech guy is gonna have to realize that the website is extremely 
out of date and needs to hire somebody to just do updates. Um, and Tom, uh, Tom, Tom, former I, Laflam, um, had put all of that stuff so that there was an online version. You could actually just access it from your phone. Uh, it just needs to be updated. And the current IT director does not have the time to do that. So the solution would be hire somebody temporarily to do it. Well, I, I, I suppose that um, could lead into a, uh, a more uh, in-depth conversation um, about um, those kind of jack of all trade uh, benefits that could happen from a uh, full-time economic development coordinator who could take a look at things like yeah, you know. um, uh, updating the businesses, updating the website um, and those things. And, and I think that perhaps might be, um, I, I know one of my, my goals is to continue that conversation about, um, and I think it's uh, appropriate now as it, we just heard a coordinator's report from a part-time coordinator that it might be beneficial to the town long-term from a strategy perspective to have someone full-time that can do multiple things that can benefit the town, whether or not it's keeping the website updated, uh, doing outreach to businesses, applying for grants and other things that can kind of move things forward. So I, I think that's going to once again, remain on our uh, radar screen, um, but I definitely take the, the point of uh, getting the uh, the website updated is a uh, is a beneficial thing for those um, local business directories so um, thank you uh, thank you for that um, uh, Marika without anything else to add I'm going to move on to the the next discussion item which is um, to appoint liaisons for the other boards and committees um, I think that this was a uh, a great idea from Alan um, to make sure that uh, we as an economic development committee uh, maintain relationships and are aware of what's going on with our other boards and committees. I think uh, Alan had uh, expressed an interest in uh, uh, auditing, paying attention to the planning board uh, committees. Um, I had expressed interest in um, uh, watching the agendas and participating with the Community Preservation Committee. Um, and I know that there are other uh, boards and committees that can have tangential um, benefits uh, to the town, such as the Trails Committee, such as um, uh, Shopsy and, and others, to make sure that we're aware of what those other boards and committees are doing and how those might fit in with some of our own initiatives. Um, I, I do know that if we're looking to re-energize the downtown, connecting to uh, local trail networks can't hurt because if we have people walking toward downtown, there's the opportunity to support those local businesses that are there. So uh, I think, um, and, and someone please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, we may want to take a vote uh, of the committee uh, for those appointments to the other boards and committees kind of on a volunteer basis for those that we think might fit. Um, as I mentioned, Ellen had expressed interest in the planning board and I had expressed interest in the CPC. Um, to the committee, um, are there other boards and committees that people would like to um, basically act as uh, the liaison for, for the EDC? I'm happy to do trails if, if that, I, I think that's a good one. Um, or maybe also we should think about um, what other committees we want to make sure we have on our radar before we decide to make sure the ones that we think are most relevant are covered. Yes, I, I, I do know that there are lots of, um, lots of committees out there. I, I know one thing that's important to the town is uh, recreation, but I don't know necessarily how that fits in with our economic development initiative besides 
providing an amenity to get residents in. And once we have the residents in, they provide the workforce to support some of the businesses in the community. So I'm not sure if there are others. Yeah, that's that's a good point. I mean, so much of it goes hand in hand with the you know the amenities that that they can provide. Um, that is a good. I know we've worked with them in the past, and we've had different ideas for joint initiatives with them. Uh, I know when we were a while ago talking about the restaurant tax and how it could be applied, we talked about you know maybe you know sharing some of that with things like field development and things like that. We thought was a good idea. No, that 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 that's good. Yeah, um, uh, John, I, I see your hand raised. That's Chris. Yeah, sorry, kind of work while I'm doing this. I apologize for getting on late. I had a, a longer meeting than I thought I would this morning. Um, as you know, I'm already on Shopsy, but I think an important one is that we should uh, work with at least pay attention to is capital planning committee. Um, yes, just because of roads, different things like that. Uh, I'd be happy to reach out to Jason and have him, you know, let me know whenever uh, they have anything pertinent to EDC or we could have something going good for them. But I think that's a, a biggie, especially what we're going to be tackling right now and then run. Uh, uh, most definitely. Yes. I, that's, um, and there's also the, uh, the report that's going to be coming out on the school, um, I believe as well. So knowing what's happening there might be, um, beneficial to us. So capital, yeah. Um, capital. Sorry, yeah. Um, so right now, I'll be honest, I started a new job two weeks ago and my bandwidth is uh, a little narrower than it used to be with, with onboarding. I haven't done that in a long time. Yeah. Um, so what's nice is they meet at night. So I will have an easier chance of finding out more about that. Excellent. And, and I think uh, one of the things that I'm hoping from this is just um, um, it is, is just to make sure that we are um, aware, kind of updates, things that might be um, beneficial for the committee to, to know. Um, so, you know, I'm not asking everyone to uh, devote even more time to another committee. Um, I'll be glad to jump in here. Sure. I'd be glad to do two, recreation and zoning. Recreation, I can remember calling on a couple of companies and the first thing they asked me, this is several years ago, where are the athletic facilities we can use? And I gave them the names of different schools that might have their courts available for basketball or we've got volleyball courts. Um, but it's interesting I remember in Marlboro, one of the corporations that moved in requested outdoor recreation, um, like a, a walking trail or, and Marlboro did something to accommodate that kind of recreational benefit for its employees. So I'd be glad to do that. And, and also the zoning board Okay, uh, uh, fabulous. No, um, that's that's very good. Um, yeah. So the one I had my eye on was the um, the advisory committee. Um, but yeah. Uh, I, I confess not to knowing exactly what the advisory committee does. So maybe that's part of my part of my <laughs> curiosity. But I hear them mentioned many times, and they seem to have have uh, some in, in importance in the town. So I think having coverage yeah. of that would make sense. That's a really good one, Matt. That's yeah. yeah that's definitely one that we should keep our keep on our radar. I mean, they're, I feel like they're more active around budget season, yep. but they kind of have to know everything. Um, but, you know, just having a thumb on, you know, they carry a lot of weight as to what they support and don't support a town meeting. Most of the people on the committee are really thorough and kind of, they really kind of have to have their, like their, their ear on everything. So that's actually a really good one. I was on advisory for 10 years, Matt, you'll learn a lot. Okay. Um, yeah. I've How's seen town meetings go when it's a split between advisory and board of selectmen. Nine times out of ten, town meeting will listen to advisory over board of selectmen. They carry a lot of well, they did. They carry a lot of weight. Yeah, they do extraordinary work in reviewing everybody's uh, whatever it's more than just doing, budgets. and it's impressive. Uh, 
work that they do and they great influence. I think they were they greatly influenced the success of our special town meeting. Agreed. Excellent. Um, so are there any others that people can think of that would be beneficial for us to, to keep on our radar screen? Did anyone say Board of Selectmen? Sorry, I missed it. I don't think. Who has the key relationship with the town manager? I mean, if you mean Mark Purple, I think we all kind of intersect and interact with him here and there. I don't know if anyone's got, <clears throat> I don't know if anyone has a specific strong relationship, but. I, you know, I help me out. Um, where'd she go? Where's Marika? <laughs> She's there. She's under town of Southboro. She's showing us the town seal. Okay. Well. Mark Purple, or the town manager, always holds departmental meetings, and uh, having somebody attend those with her gone, somebody ought to be representing us at those meetings. Well, what, one thing I want, I want to echo, and I, I think someone else said it a little bit differently earlier, and, and I just want to underscore it. These at least my interpretation is we need not necessarily attend every single meeting for these committees. It could be looking at the agenda ahead of time. It could be reaching out to that chair to see if something is discussed. Because like we said, it's all, it's all volunteer time. This is extra volunteer time. So um, uh, as much as Mark Purple has, you know, department head meetings and stuff like that, we might not need to attend all of those, but um, where relevant, where pertinent, we should and, and share back here. But I just want to make sure everyone knows that. So, so it doesn't seem so as onerous as it might appear. Um, just to Chris, so um, Mark Purple, the, the town administrator, he does hold town department meetings once in a while. It's not a, a very regular thing. And it's mostly for, it is for town employees and it's a lot of um, internal discussion. So I think um, yeah, depending on what the EDC is working on, if if it um, if you need to discuss something with Mark Purple, just reach out to him um, on a project to project basis. But yeah, I just want to say that um, it's critical for town employees. I mean, for example, one of our biggest champions for economic development has been Paul Savelli. I mean, we we don't sit down with him a lot. But you know, when he goes up to present what the tax rate ought to be, he talks about economic development and the dual tax rate. He is an advocate advocate to this town and growth and, and the business community. And um, that's, a, that's a, it's just refreshing to hear him talk about that. Um, and I think having other people, I, I, Vanessa Hale, for example, when we had one of our first big meetings with a couple of economic consultants several years ago, Vanessa jumped in and helped coordinate our activity with us. She wasn't asked, she just, she just showed up. And um, like she held the, with Mark, the breakfast for all the volunteers. So she has incredible influence and the, the town employees are kind of invisible to us because we don't see them playing an active role, but in effect, I mean, I have coffee in the morning at Dunkin' Donuts and there's a woman who works in DPW and she has a pulse on what we're doing. I couldn't believe it. Um, so I just think we shouldn't uh, assume that they're not involved. They're very much a, a, a involved and uh, very astute about what is going on in the town and those relationships with them can make a big difference in how we go forward. If, 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 if I may, Rob, is it okay if I add on to that? Yes, yeah. Okay, sorry. Chris, I, I'm not sure if you're doing it inadvertently or advertently, but you're. I think in my opinion, you're making a, a good distinction here. And the initial topic surface was where can we as members of the planning board plug into other boards and committees in towns? Right. What you're surfacing, I think, is how can we better connect with people in positions in town roles? I think that's just as important. So I think maybe what we can do here is 
finish scanning the list of committees. I know Michael's not on board. Maybe we can assign him five or six because he's not here. Who knows? Um, but we can finish looking over here and see which ones we think we should be plugging into. And then I think would be a good future topic would be looking at the specific roles of town employees and how can we every once in a while have a cup of coffee, see what's going on, those kinds of things. Because that's just as important. But I do think it's a separate topic than what we're talking about right now. But again, right. just as important. Sounds good. As I've said before, and I'll say it again, all the successful economic development committees in towns around us um, and other towns further away from us all have somebody from the planning board on it, all have an administrator of some type, either the assistant town administrator, the town administrator slash manager, um, select board actively in their committees. I still think we should try to push to get people more involved from committees such as planning, zoning, and uh, administration on this committee. Well Adam. said, John. Well said, John. You know, I've, I, I tried getting it a couple of years ago when I was chair. Um, wasn't met very well. Uh, but we did wind up getting um, more support from the Board of Selectmen than we had. So that was a good start. But I, I really think we should we should reach out to them and and ask them again what they think. It's a new board. You've got different members on it. You've got Andrew, you've got Kathy, Chelsea, Lisa, and Sam. You know, maybe things have changed now that they're seeing how things are going. Maybe once I think people realize that uh, the Economic Development Committee isn't an EDC issue, it's a town issue. I don't think we have as bad a spending issue as we have a revenue issue. And the only way to get revenue is keep business to keep business. You got to go out and reach out to these people, and it takes it takes a village to do it. John, John, you said it well. One of the first members of the um, economic development team, as it was initially called, was the number two person in charge of St. Mark's. And that was new. And then we had uh, a vice president of one of the big development companies who was a resident on our committee, including, uh, and then on the ZBA, we had uh, Eagle Leasing President, Chairman of the ZBA, who was on the economic development team. So uh, I couldn't agree with you more there, John. So. Yeah, and, and when we started the Economic Development Committee, at the time, the town planner regularly attended our meetings. At the time, Mark and Vanessa regularly attended our meetings. And we had a full member position who was a Board of Selectmen member. Um, that attended every meeting, I think was a voting member. Um, and, you know, obviously we don't have that anymore. So I think that's a really good point in finding, you know, one, inviting them to come. But if, but I think we do that. And if we don't, and, you know, if they can't come, then finding other ways to connect with them so they know what they're doing, what we're doing. No, uh, all, all good points. And uh, I do. I would be remiss if I didn't say we have uh, Sam Stivers, um, who does come to uh, a lot of these meetings as an attendee um, in the audience to hear, if not necessarily always participate. So uh, hopefully some of the things that we're talking about um, are uh, ring a bell with Sam that can help inform him and the select board on some of the things going forward. But uh, to the, the the greater point that um, I've heard from people, uh, getting more participation from them would definitely help us achieve some of our goals um, to improve the quality of life for residents. So uh, without getting too far off the um, a, a, a agenda item, to appoint liaisons to other boards and committees, um, are there any other boards that uh, people right now can uh, think of where um, we would want to at least think about um, following up on, keeping uh, aware of uh, for, for things going forward. I'm scanning the list right now. I can't think of any um, others, but maybe <clears throat> if anyone else has something else to come up, uh, we can surface it at a later meeting. Um, but I think we've probably have the big ones covered for now. And maybe if we one more or two more does come up, we can um, politely ask Michael if he'd be willing to take one on. Yeah. 
Hey, definitely. Um, so, um, I, I'm not sure. Um, and, and I'll put this out to the committee because I don't know the answer. What I have um, identified uh, here is that uh, capital has um, is John is interested in capital and Shopsy. Shopsy, where he uh, participates anyway. Um, Alan has interest in the planning board. I have interest in the CPC. Um, Matt has interest in advisory. Uh, Chris has interest in uh, recreation and zoning. And Julie has some interest in trails. Um, uh, do we want to make a motion and vote? Or is it this just kind of an understood that um, we are going to try our best to keep apprised of those particular committees and report back when there's something of interest. Frankly, I, I don't think we need to take a vote on that. I, I, yeah, I just think I it's think so something either. that um, is understood and that um, we can, as part of our normal agenda um, on the member reports, cover those things when there's something of importance. That's what I was going to say. Good. Well said. I agree awesome. with, with just one plus one to that is if someone feels who, if we're voluntarily taking on this, this extra sort of um, keep an eye on sort of uh, task, if we feel like that we're falling behind, we don't have enough time or whatnot, just mention it at a future meeting so we can get it reassigned just so it doesn't completely fall by the wayside. Understand if commitments come up, that's, you know, that's life. But let's make sure that you know we can try to either try to get it reassigned or resourced some other way. Excellent, w wonderful. Um, and uh, you know the the one thing I will say in um, uh, <laughs> my vacation popped up at the wrong time. There's actually a community preservation committee meeting on May 19th. So uh, I think going forward, it appears like. Uh, they meet uh, on a monthly basis, so hopefully I'll have the opportunity to um, share some information with people uh, after the, the next CPC meeting. So, um, wonderful. So, I think the next discussion item is the job description and roles responsibilities for the EDC coordinator. Um, the, uh, the town manager and Vanessa had shared um, the, uh, the previous job description. I think Marika had put it out to the group. Um, are there any uh, comments, changes, things we want to add? I I think um, right off the bat, for me, I would like to see it become a full time position in the future. And um, in my current job, we talk about uh, the capital stack, which is how you can come up with all the money to get your project complete. Um, I do know that there's a line item for the EDC within the um, town's budget. I do know that there could be the opportunity to go after some ARPA funds for at least um, bringing this uh, potentially uh, to a full-time position to see uh, the value going forward. Um, I had brought up uh, last time that as part of the Community Preservation uh, Act, up to 5% of that money can be used for the administration of the Community Preservation Act in the town. That is reviewing uh, applications. That is participating with the Community Preservation Committee. They do not have a full-time person, nor do they have a part-time person. From an overall town standpoint, from a quality of life, Having someone assist that particular committee might be useful, particularly because um, there has not been a housing project from the CPC in a long time. So if we're thinking about a capital stack and a uh, jack of all trades position that can help the EDC potentially apply for grants that are not necessarily underneath the purview of the EDC to assist the Community Preservation Committee, that could be um, a way to build that capital stack, if if I can use that term again, um, to, to get that role. So um, that is just kind of my thinking off the bat towards that particular um, job description. Now, um, are there um, other uh, 
committee members' thoughts on this. Alan, I see your hand raised. Thank you. Uh, yes, one thing I, I wanted to call out is, um, or a couple things rather, I, I support the notion of making this a full-time role with some expanded responsibilities. Um, we probably all know this, but moving to a full-time role is going to require a bigger salary, which is probably going to re require some town meeting action. So we should just need to be mindful of that. I ag agree with your point um, that you said, Rob. In fact, um, Mark Purple even kind of casually suggested it at the breakfast, like, hey, well, there's some ARPA funding coming up and hasn't been fully all allocated yet. Now, since that comment and now, um, I think the select board has been presented with some suggestions on how to spend the ARPA funding. Um, so, you know, we, we would need to kind of act quickly if we wanted to try to, to, to get in on, on that, of course. Um, so, yes, we would just need to be mindful that if there were, this were to be a full time position, some things would have to change. The other thing that that's worth pointing out and just to kind of build on something you said is that this notion of having someone who can focus on writing grants a little more fully, because that seems to be a lot of sourcing of our money. Um, there was a mention to from someone at the volunteer breakfast to me when we were talking about this, but gee, wouldn't it be great if we could use that person for the entire town, all the boards and committees for all kinds of grant writing, uh, which is I think expanding a little more on what you were saying, Rob, as well. And I think if we were to, to change the job description to be more accessible for any boarding committee within the town to use that resource, um, you know, um, that might curry more favor and be looked upon more favorably to make a full-time position. So just wanted to point that out, but I, I support everything that you had said. Thanks. Are there any other uh, comments on the, the job description? I, I, I think, um, although I, I wish the, the job had been posted um, sooner, um, as, as, as the chair, um, I, I I I would like someone in sooner um, so that one uh, a lot of those responsibilities don't necessarily fall to uh, the volunteer committee, particularly as we have um, money in the budget for that role. So uh, I, and, and holistically, I think a lot of the job description covers what we want that person to do, um, and I think. Once again, this gives me the perfect opportunity to mention the fact that Marika always went above and beyond the job description in terms of the time and her effort to make sure that we as a committee um, had everything we needed at our uh, fingertips. And uh, we got huge value from her um, fulfilling that role. So uh, I, I would like to. Um, I will entertain uh, a motion. Oh, Chris, I see your hand. I I thought it was a great description. I meant to send in some suggestions, um, and I could do that today. I guess you're looking for an approval on the current. Well, what what? Uh, so, quite frankly, I don't want to be viewed as a um, a roadblock to getting no. this posted as soon as possible. Okay. So I I frankly I want someone in. It's as, fine. ASAP. It's fine. Has it been posted yet? I I I have I I have not seen it, but once again, no. it Marika, what was that? No, no, it hasn't yet. I think Vanessa is working on it because there are multiple um vacancies. So I think she was planning to do it by I guess next week. So okay. the town policy is wait till it's vacant and then try to find people in it. Uh I don't know. You have to ask. You'll have to ask the administrator's know. office. Yeah. I think that there was also sense. there was also a message about um, like a salary review as well. So there's another component that that's related. Uh, John, I'm not sure if that's intentional or just um, happenstance. Why waiting for it to be vacant? It sure would have been nice. I think someone else had mentioned. I forget whom. So my apologies that to bring someone in an overlap and shadow. But um, here we are. We we can't do that. So um, but yeah. And and um, like I said, as I much as I wish it had been posted, I do not want the the town manager's office to say we're waiting for comments from the EDC before we post. Um, I found no issues holistically from uh, the job description, and we all know that um, job descriptions can change and adjust slightly over time. 
what I really want to be able to do is get back to um, Vanessa and say, we have no issues with the um, job description. Please post as soon as possible. And, and to that, I'd, I'd, I'd entertain a, a motion to make that happen and a vote. So move. Okay, okay um, I got, I, I the way I heard it, um, yep. I heard Alan and because it happens almost simultaneously, I'm gonna get the second for Chris. Okay, so we've got a motion on the floor to approve the uh, job description as written and respond to um, Vanessa um, positively. Uh, I'm going to go as I see people um, with the vote. Uh, Matt? Yes. Uh, Julie? Yes. Uh, Alan? Yes. Chris? Yes. John? Aye. Uh, Rob? Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, you know, uh, uh, thank you. Um, I just want to, you know, make sure that we uh, fulfill that um, requirement from uh, the town manager's office. Move on. Um, so, uh, without any further discussion on that, uh, administrative business, uh, the approval of meeting minutes for May 12th, 2022, I think Claire had distributed those, um, earlier. I'm not sure if people have had the, the chance to, uh, take a look at them yet. They were sent out yesterday, so, um, I think the only thing is um, just as long as everybody where their name is referenced, um, it is, I've captured whatever they said correctly. Should be good to go. Excellent. I was able to look them over. I didn't, I didn't check grammar or anything like that, but uh, at a skim level, um, they appear to be appropriate. So with that, um, I make a motion to accept the um, May 12, 2022 minutes um, as submitted. Second. Okay. Um, okay, wonderful. Uh, so I'm gonna do uh, the roll call vote again. Um, Matt Berger? Yes. Uh, Julie Connolly? Yes. Uh, Alan Belniak? Yes. Chris Robbins? Yes. John Wood? Yep, and Rob Anderson, yes as well. Um, wonderful. Uh, unfinished business. Um, I, I did want to uh, let people know that uh, as much as we uh, sometimes feel as if we're in a vacuum uh, on Zoom and that uh, Sam is oftentimes the uh, only uh, attendee in the audience, I did, um, and, and I, once again, uh, being on vacation, did receive an email from uh, a gentleman, Kevin Farrington, um, who had uh, heard our discussion about um, solar and uh, the uh, opportunities that could be out there for us to do uh, clean energy. Um, he had brought up uh, in an email, which I've not had the opportunity to respond to, um, about uh, potential grants for uh, uh, to do public charging stations for electric vehicles. Um, this This is something that I was not necessarily aware of, uh, and it might be something uh, that uh, going forward, we want to pursue. Uh, I, I do think that anything that we can do to reduce our carbon footprint, and anytime there's money from the state to uh, reimburse the town for um, town provided public charging stations, it, it is a good thing. Um, so I, I did want to once again, uh, thank Kevin for um, his email. I will be responding uh, to him once you know, once you unpack from uh, vacation. Uh, it's you have a lot of emails to go through, uh, but it, it's something that we can uh, pursue because I think anything that we as a town can do to uh, be more sustainable, it puts us in a better position for business recruitment, business retention and the improvement of uh, the quality of life for residents. So uh, that is just one of the things that I wanted to hit upon on the unfinished business. Uh, and once again, uh, thank those residents who choose in to send uh, comments. And, um, you know, once again, uh, let people know on the committee that there are other people out there um, watching and paying attention to what we talk about. So that's the unfinished business on my side. 
Um, is there any other other unfinished business out there? I see Marika has her hand raised. Yeah, I just want to comment on the charging station grants. Um, if you can forward that to me, I'll forward it to John Parent. Um, I know, I mean, this must be a year, two years ago, we had discussed that because at that time it was new and I know um, some of the companies were offering free installation and, and all kinds of things. So we looked at it for the town. There was also one business on Main Street that was interested and was asking for help to install an electric charging, an electric charging station at their property. Uh, but in the end, the town uh, decided against it. I think they felt um, there was there wasn't enough, you know, they didn't, they didn't want to use public parking space for for that purpose, and they were afraid people out of town might have, you know, started using that to charge their their vehicles. But anyways, I don't, I'm not sure if their position has changed, um, but I think it would be uh, beneficial if I share this and have a chat with uh, John Parent about it uh, to see how how to move forward. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. Um, with no other um, unfinished business, um, is there any new business? Hey, I heard, I heard the CAS, CAS building was purchased by somebody. Wasn't that wasn't that purchased that was by month, Ferris? That was a while ago, Chris. Yeah, that, that was, was Ferris. Okay. Um, just as unfinished, I don't know if this uh, goes under unfinished or new business, but um, just wanted to let, give everyone a heads up that in-person meetings will start sometime in July. So I'm sure uh, a message will go out, uh, but um, in-person meetings are allowed. And if people need to do um, hybrid meetings or are interested in hybrid meetings, um, the town has an owl uh, that they use uh, for that purpose um, in the uh, McAuliffe hearing room, so. Um, I also, I, I think we talked about this at maybe our last meeting, but um, does it make sense? I know we've been doing every other week and I, I think that's great, but does it make sense maybe just for the summer months, especially until we have a new coordinator in place to just go down to once a month? Um, and then maybe pick it back up, you know, hopefully, because even if we're posting a position now, it's probably going to take a little time to get somebody in and get them started. So I think, you know, kind of having a, a reset, um, you know, at that point, and, you know, because I think it'll be important then that we're all engaged with the new, whoever the new coordinator is to kind of, you know, get, get everything up and running. But until that time with it becoming summer and people going away, it might make sense to go down to once a month. I mean, we've been very diligent for a long time, but um, a lot of committees only meet once a month. And whereas unless there's, you know, an urgent need um, at this point, that's my proposal. Yeah, Julie, I support that. I was just going to say um, with just a friendly amendment, but you, you said it right at the end is that unless something urgent comes up and if it does, then we can meet kind of an Pull the pull the committee and me on an ad hoc basis, but yep, I think that's a great idea. Uh, I I agree as well. Um. So then I oh, I Julie, are you making a motion? Do we need or, to? I don't know. Do I'm not sure. I, don't think so. I mean, we can. Okay. Most committees only meet once a month unless there's something else going on. A lot of committees anyway. So and that's how we used to do it. I think we can just set the next meeting and and we can obviously. You know, if we if we set the next meeting for, you know, towards the end of June and then um, evaluate at that point based on the status. And obviously, um, you know, Rob, let us know, um, you know, if we get some candidates, I'm, you know, always happy to, you know, I think a, at least a few of us should meet with that person in the interview process. Usually Mark and, and Vanessa include, you know, the, the standing members. So, um, you know, that, that kind of stuff, absolutely. Um, and but yeah. No, I I think that's a uh, I think that's a very good point, and uh, I I do like the idea of just a uh, a single meeting um, every month during the uh, the months of uh, June, July, and August. Um, and I propose that meeting be um, as opposed to an evening, if that's okay. But 
depending yeah I and mean, you know that's usually easier for me <laughs> if that makes sense but if other people feel differently that's fine too no, I, 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 agree. I know, John. You're always at odds on that one. I can do an evening; it's fine. I just no, I can. I'll I'll make it work too, no matter what. So, thanks, Or we can alternate. <laughs> That's fine. So, um, okay. So, I, I think um, uh, to that, um, I I'm going to go to uh, public comment. But the the last thing on the agenda is the uh, the next potential meeting date. Um, and given the conversation that we just had, I might adjust that next meeting date slightly and kind of pull the uh, the committee right now. But I do notice that, um, uh, and as we are on public comment, I see uh, Sam Stivers has his hand raised in the audience. Morning, folks. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. Uh, a few sort of random comments. I uh, appreciate the chance to listen in here today. And I'll start by reinforcing the universal thanks to Marika for her uh, outstanding efforts over the last several years here. We are, are certainly at, uh, losing a huge asset there, but certainly wish her the best with her next steps. Um, uh, following on the, the charging station uh, issue from uh, Mr. Farrington, uh, some of you may know, um, A, he, has, he does own an electric vehicle, B, his spouse is Debbie DeMuria, who is the new planning board member, and I know Debbie thinks that's an important thing to do, and I think you're going to see more focus from the planning board in terms of site plans and so forth for consideration of that, and we have looked at that over the years. I'm not sure why there hasn't been more enthusiasm. I think the, the concerns about uh, who's using it and who pays for it have been uh, discussed, but it seems to me that a there's certainly a lot of money out there for that, and I think that's something that we should continue to push. Um, and in terms of money out there, um, the grant writer proposal again was one of the first things I did uh, when I was elected three years ago. And clearly, it's hard to get resources, but I remain content that uh, a good grant writer can more than pay for themselves many times over in that process. That's a resource the town ought to use, I think, much more aggressively. And I think with our, our new board, new chair from the select board, I think there's more appetite for doing some of those kind of things. So uh, I am optimistic that we may be able to make some progress with that. Uh, back to Chris's ur ur earlier point about the uh, conversation at the food truck event, it's Chris Dano from the fire department, uh, who is, I think, uh, uh, again, interested in, in supporting the efforts that Chris suggested. And I think that's a great idea. Um, I think there is also renewed interest on the select board for the business outreach activity. And so unfortunate that we're losing Marika here, but hopefully their successor uh, will continue that effort to have those discussions. And I think, frankly, I think that the town administrative office ought to play a much stronger role in that. I've suggested that. I don't know where that's going to go, but I'll continue to push on that as well. And um, finally, I hate to uh, increase your workload, Rob, but uh, there's a... <laughs> Uh, in the in the Zoom world, uh, I, I assume folks are aware that the meetings that are recorded are available on YouTube. And so it turns out you can actually speed play YouTube. And the CPC meeting is now recorded there. So you can see that in half time, basically, <laughs> want to do that. And also, you can actually do the closed captions uh, for those meetings and paste them into a Word document and read it faster than you can watch it if you want to do that as well. So so you can cover a lot of meetings in more efficient ways than simply, you know, sitting in on the meetings and like that, which is, I think, a, a good thing to consider if you're tight for time on those things. Cover now, a lot. Uh, well, I, I always um, appreciate suggestions to make uh, life a little bit more efficient. Um, that's that's or, always a good thing. Or there's no excuse for missing a meeting now. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> It's a double-edged sword. It so, is. <laughs> um, and I think that's it. So again, thanks for the work that you folks do, and I will try to stay connected here. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, so uh, I, I, as I mentioned, uh, at the last line um, on our agenda, had the next meeting being Thursday, June 9th at 7.30 um, p.m., um, uh, 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 I'd be willing to entertain that as a uh, a meeting date or potentially moving it to um, another date and time that might be 
uh, more convenient, uh, particularly as we would be just having one during the month of June. Um, so I guess I'll open it up to the committee to see if there are any uh, suggestions. What time and where? Well, we would um, do it via Zoom. Um, I think Marika had mentioned that um, July would be the, the beginning of the in-person. Um, I uh, There are a couple of Thursdays in June for me where evening events on Thursday nights do not work. Um, uh, Friday mornings are also, um, I understand, might have some conflicts with people's full-time jobs. Um, so I, I guess I guess I'm opening up to, to people to potentially suggest the date, either a Thursday night at 7:30 or a Friday morning at 8:15, and um, see how uh, people's schedules look for that day. So looking at calendar here, that would be um, two two suggestions would be Thursday the 23rd um, evening, Friday the 24th morning. Um, the following week pushes us into June 30, July 1, and that's the beginning of typically 4th of July weekend and stuff like that. So my suggestion is to not go that late, but um, that's if we wanted to go a month. But John, what did you? I just want to say I have a standing 8 o'clock Friday morning meeting every Friday that goes to about 8.30. Um, maybe a little later. That's why I got on today. So if we could make it a little later, if it's going to be a Friday morning. Um, yeah, I, I have no problem with making the, the 8.30s. I mean, doesn't matter as much in the summer. Like 8.30 is actually better for me probably as far as like being able to get the kids out of the house and everything first. So I'm fine with an 8.30. Um, my June is a little nuts. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do the 23rd or 24th. I'll be on vacation. And the ninth, I'm, I'm on a work trip. The ninth and tenth, I'm on a work trip. Um, I could do Friday morning, the seventeenth. But again, also, I can just not go to it. <laughs> it doesn't work if other people if it works better for other people. Yeah, the the seventeenth, I actually have a uh, defense roundtable um, for work in person um, at eight thirty. So yeah. it's something I could definitely. Um, uh, that is a date that doesn't particularly work okay. either. Um, and and uh, quite quite honestly, um, it is the summertime. There are lots of evening events, um, and I, I I honestly like the idea of pushing it out to eight thirty. Um, so, it, it, with the committee's um, approval, I, I'm going to say that one. Our next meeting will not be on um, Thursday, June 9th at 7.30, and that we're going to uh, potentially aim for a Friday the 24th at 8.30 for um, the next EDC meeting. Well, that, I'll be on vacation. I, I might be able to log on depending on what we're doing at that time, but I won't, I'm not going to count on it. One thing to note too is that our meeting invitations have typically come from Marika. So with her not being here anymore after June 1, um, Rob, you and I can discuss who pushes that out. Um, I yeah, can uh, it's, uh, it's pushing out the uh, invitation. It's also getting the um, agenda yeah. posted with the yep. uh, town clerk's office. Yep. Um, and uh, given that that is happening, um, there, we do tend to have a, some pretty consistent things on that agenda. Uh, and Ellen, you and I will have to talk about, um, yep. what goes on it and, uh, with the potential of writing an agenda earlier, maybe we can get it out onto my South Borough or something like that. Yep. Um, too. So, okay. Um, it's the summertime. There are, um, vacations. All we need is a quorum of four people so we can work around people's uh, calendars, stuff like that. Sorry, one other thing worth adding really quickly. I'm not trying to belabor this, but um, I know that South Borough resident Karen Anglum, who attended a previous meeting, has submitted uh, paperwork. Um, and if all goes well, she will be before the Board of Selectmen at a future meeting to be interviewed. 
again if all goes well and then to be added to um our our committee which increases our member count which makes it easier to meet quorum so i just thought that's worth adding here yeah i actually think aaron would be a really good addition to this committee as well, so yeah. wonderful um so uh with that um do i have a, a motion to uh adjourn so moved second so Okay, awesome. I'm going to go through people as I see them here. Uh, Matt. Yes. John. Aye. Alan. Yes. Chris. Um, yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Uh, Julie. Yes. Okay, uh, Rob. Yes. Um, the uh, EDC's meeting uh, is adjourned. Um, Hold it. That's the same thing, Chris. Guess what, guys? Mariko, we're going to miss you. <laughs> no, we're going to be lost without you. Yes. Mariko, can you actually move? Mute. Anyway, you're, on, you're on mute, Mariko. One last time. <laughs> Mariko, you're on mute. Come on, Mariko. Oops. Sorry. Uh, I'm moving in July. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm hopeful that we can find a time to get together in person before then and thank you properly. Um, so I know you're busy coming up, but let's um, let's coordinate something because this this is not <laughs> this this is this is not it. I second that. Yep. I do too. The dog does too. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, thanks, everyone. You'll see an agenda and invitation coming out, and uh, we'll all get together to celebrate with you <laughs> sometime before she leaves. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys. Thanks.